Hello, welcome back. My name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at hyperparameter tuning within Python. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. Now, when you're dealing with hyperparameters, you are dealing with values that the algorithm cannot set itself based on the results of your data. In other words, these are values within the algorithm that you have to specify yourself in order for it to function. Now, fortunately, you know, most algorithms have, excuse me, most algorithms have a default value for their hyper, for the different hyperparameters of an algorithm. So your algorithm will always work based off of that default value. However, if you want to fine tune the results to try to boost the performance into a little bit here and there, here and there, you have to try to determine what is the most appropriate value for your hyperparameters um, using the various techniques that we will discuss in this particular video. So right here, the key part that we need to focus on is this part right here. There are several steps for doing this. Of course, you have to prepare your data. We're going to fly through that quickly so that the video does not get too long, but you have to prepare your data and you have to set a baseline model. In other words, your baseline models where you don't really change too many things to the algorithm and then you compare the tuned model to the baseline results. Otherwise, you have no idea if you're doing better or not. You have to have some sort of, of a comparison. Then you have to set up your develop your excuse me, your grid. And essentially when we're talking about the grid, in order to set your hyperparameters, you just make a lot of models with different values and then you determine what metric you're going to use to determine what is a good model for you in your context. And so once you do that, you will start to get the, the, the output will give you suggestions on what is the most appropriate um, values for your various hyperparameters. And then of course, once you know what are the best values, then you take those values and you put them in your revised model to get your results. So in this particular situation, we're going to be using a K, K, uh, K nearest neighbor classifier. That's gonna be the algorithm that we're using and we're going to be trying to see how we can adjust the parameters for that particular algorithm to improve performance when we are trying to predict people who are married and people who are not married in our data set. So right here we have all the, the various modules that we're going to be using, Panda, NumPy, line number three here is where we get our data from. I already mentioned how we're going to be using the K nearest neighbor classifier. Uh, line number five, cross vowel score is what we're going to use as our metric. We're going to use some tools from there. And then finally, we're going to be doing making a grid so that we can make mini models and try to see what are some appropriate values for the various hyperparameters of the K nearest neighbor algorithm. So I press control enter to run this. And now I don't want to spend a lot of time on data preparation because this video would get really long but we need to clean up some things here. Remove NAs. We got to make a dummy variable for, for the married variable. Uh, we have to, of course, also deal with the, the error codes and the education in, educat in variable and the kids variable. I've used this data set in other videos. So again, for the sake of time, I don't want to really spend a lot of time on this. So here's what we're going to be doing. First, we're going to, of course, load our data and we're gonna drop the NAs. Then in these two lines right here, we're gonna code our dummy variable for people who are married and not married. Then after that, we're gonna make sure that it's set as an integer type. That's what we're gonna do here. And then down here in line six and seven, we are dealing with these uh, error values in the kids, number of kids or the kids variable and the educate in variable. So what was happening there is they put some values like 98 and 99, those represent values where people didn't want to share or they didn't know the answer to that type of a question. And you know, common sense just tells you that people cannot have 98 or 99 kids and people cannot have an education level of 98 or 99, you know, it's just common sense. But again, I really don't want to spend a lot of time on this. So we're just going to run this code and we cleaned up a lot of stuff there. Again, we're really going to focus on the hyperparameter tuning and not so much on the data preparation. And in this piece of code right here, we're setting up our, 
our object or our data set where we have the independent variables in the X and then we have our dependent variable in the object called Y. So we press control enter and that's run. Now, like I said, we are going to, of course, be using the K nearest neighbor algorithm. And there are several hyperparameters that you have to set yourself. So for example, the number of neighbors, there is no way for the algorithm to determine that for you. You must tell it the size of the K, the weight of the neighbors. This is the second one, the metric for measuring the distance and the power parameter for Minkowski when the Minkowski is used. That's how this works. So these are four hyperparameters that we have to set here. So to show you how this works, we're going to set in a, a baseline model right here. And so you can see here that the number of neighbors we're going to set, we're going to set it to five for now. That's what we're going to do. Weights is uniform. That means they all have equal value in terms of their influence on the prediction. The metric is Minkowski and the power parameter is going to be set to two, which I believe is um, Manhattan or Euclidean, one of those two. You can look up the details at the scikit-learn website. So these are the hyperparameters, number of neighbors, one, weights, two, metric, three, and P, number four. So there's four different hyperparameters that we have to set. There are default values, like I've already mentioned, for these. So your, your, your model will run. But again, when you're trying to find ways to improve the performance, this is where hyperparameter tuning can be very valuable. In the second line, all we have here is just the results of running the model. I did a, a k-fold, k-tenfold uh, cross-validation of it. We've talked about cross-validation in previous videos, so I'm not going to repeat the details on that but it just helps to balance out or to give you a better idea of how the model performs rather than just a one-off running of the model. So I press control enter and I get my output. So right now our classification is about 62% correct. So that's our baseline. If we can improve upon this 62%, we are going in the right direction in other words. Now we have to do our grid development. This is basically where we try to come up with as many different combinations of models that we possibly can. Now there are limits depending on the strength of your computer. Obviously you don't want to make 10,000 models. You might be there for several days, but you want to make as many as you can when possible. So if you look at my grid here in line number one, I set my K neighbors to be anywhere from one to 13. One probably doesn't make sense, but you get the point anywhere from one to 13. So that means my K and my K nearest neighbor can take any value between one and 13. For weights, we have two options here, uniform and distance. So uniform, they all have the same influence on the prediction or distance. So the ones that are closer maybe have a stronger inf influence than the ones that are further away. Metric can be these two choices, Manhattan or Mankowski, and then the P can be set to one or two. So Euclidean or Manhattan as well. Okay. Now, in case you're wondering, well, how many models are you going to make? Well, this line of code right here, which you do not need in order to do your analysis, this line right here, np.prod, is going to tell us how many different models or how many different, uh, different models are in my grid. That's how this works. So this is not necessary, so I'm not going to explain it. But you can see here, all together, I'm going to make 96 different models. And what's going to happen is that I will tell, have Python tell me which model got the best performance based on whatever values for the hyperparameters was most appropriate. So we go down here now. And so now we're going to go ahead and run this. So let me put some of this here. Okay. So now we're doing something called a grid search CV. And so our estimator is going to be classifier. That's what we're doing basically. Uh, the parameter grid, this guy right here, is all this information you find up here in the previous cell. That's what's going inside there. And our scoring metric. So how are we going to determine what's best? Well, that's going to be based right here on accuracy. And then in, in jobs, this has to do with like your processor or something. Refit equals true. And of course, CV equals 10. And then we do a search.fit. And this is going to be based off of our the variables we saved in our X object, which is our independent variables. And then of course, Y, which is our dependent variable.
press control enter it takes a while for it to run and so we'll get the results in a moment or two and then once this is done we can go ahead and get an idea of how we're doing so here you go we haven't quite got our results yet we're getting there we have to print them and that's what we're going to do next so we're going to go ahead and do this now one thing i want to mention here is that the results like i mentioned are not quite here yet but we're going to find that out in this next line of code and i'm going to paste here and so you can see right here it tells us so the most appropriate metric is going to be manhattan the number of neighbors that gave the best accuracy was 11 p is set to one weights are going to be set to uh, uniform and this is the actual accuracy that the uh, com that python got based on that our original accuracy was 62 percent now it has improved to 65 percent so just making these small tweaks we we're able to get about three percent increase that's kind of how that works out now what we do now here is we are going to take these values here for the hyperparameters so manhattan for metric k equals 11 p set to one way set to uniform and we're going to go ahead and use these um and um, our revised model so moving on let me show you this real quick and of course we're going to calculate the accuracy so let me go ahead and make this so you can see everything all right so we got our second classifier now uh, by the way classifier is going to this is the name of our initial model right here that's what this is initial model okay so moving on wrapping this up so we're going to go ahead and we set our k nearest neighbor our number of neighbors to 11 now ways to uniform our metric is manhattan and the p has been set to one and in the second line of code right here we are just going to do a a, a 10 fold cross validation and we're going to get our results so press control enter and you can see we got about the same values as previously that makes sense because we're using the same data but again what the difference is well there's not much of a difference but instead of searching all through the grid now that we know what to expect we were able to tune our hyperparameters exactly to this to get the similar results without having to go through the grid that's the main uh, benefit of this and so again you know we could keep searching maybe um uh, uh we look at other hyperparameters or we you know think about other variables that could be included or whatever and all these things work together to help you to improve your performance again this is just a demonstration of course you will want to hopefully improve more than just three percent but this can make a, a quite a bit of difference depending on the context of what you're trying to do so let me see if i can summarize what we discussed and wrap up this video so in this video what we did was we looked at an example of implementing hyperparameter tuning with python we took a k nearest neighbor algorithm and we used it to try to predict whether or not people were married based on the data set that we pulled from pi data set so when you're doing this of course you have to prepare your data you've already seen that before we're going to skip that and move faster you have to set up a baseline model so that you have some idea how much better your tune model is compared to your baseline model we discussed that here then what's new for us is that you have to learn how to set up a grid and this grid is where you have all the different type of models you want to run there's no way to know what the a hype a proper hyperparameter value is unless you run as many models and see what ha what's the best in that particular context of course if you have a lot of experience maybe you can tune it based on your experience but for most of us that's not possible so here the grid we set up all the different parameters we want to tune remember if you don't set a specific value most of the time there's a default value from there we actually used our our grid here to run a a, a, a model and of course we took our friend here classifier this is our baseline results and we used him right here as our estimator that's why you, that's another reason why you have to make a baseline model and of course based on the results down here you can clearly see that the output here tells us 
what are the best parameters right here. This is what search.best underscore params underscore tells us. And then right here, it tells you what's the, what's the best score. So based on these parameters right here, these hyperparameters, this is the best score you can get. And so, you know, we proved that if you look closely, the numbers are exactly the same. So uh, we set our values here inside our model based on the results of the, of the grid, of the search grid, and we got the same results basically. And this is essentially how this works. So I would like to thank you for watching and listening. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Take care.